So this was when I was suffering from allergy reactions sometime last year. I got really paranoid because I thought, oh my gosh, I should be careful because I could die from al allergic reactions. I don't know what I was allergic to. I think it was like antibiotics, some a specific kind. Most antibiotics I found out I'm allergic to, I can only take like certain kinds. And I think there's like maybe dust particles to some extent, but there was a time where I woke up with like, my fingers were all bloated and swollen and it really hurt and my face was swollen and it was just really uncomfortable. And then I thought I was over it. When I came back to the United States from Korea, I had a dream. I couldn't breathe. My throat was swelling and closing up and I'm like, holy fuck, this is actually how I'm gonna die. Cause I read up a lot of, a lot about ana, I don't know if it's the anaphylactic shock thing where you, you know, you can't, you, you can't breathe and you like suffocate to death because of your allergies. So I had a dream that that was happening to me and I couldn't breathe and I, I remember thinking, like, holy shit, this is how, this is actually how I'm gonna go. Like, I can't believe it. And then I woke up. I, I couldn't breathe when I woke up too. So I'm like, holy shit. But then I realized I was just hyperventilating and I was like panicking. So I had to force myself to calm down and take deep breaths and just get back to normal. Probably the scariest experience because I, I actually thought I was gonna, I, I thought I was dead. I also had another dream where I was getting picked up by my friend. It was super realistic. And I ran out of the street. I ran out to the street way too quickly and the car um, like, in the back of my friend's car, but then another car came forward and crushed me between the two cars and everything went black in the dream. And I remember thinking, holy shit, am I dead? Is this actually how it's over? And, like, it was just black and stillness, and I remember being really sad, like, damn, I didn't want to die already, like, had a lot of things I wanted to do. And then I woke up, and I'm like, oh, wow, uh, God bless life, I'm very thankful to be alive today. <laughs> Imagine a place where it's pure white, right? Everything is white. And I'm standing there, right? I'm on something. I don't know what it is, but it's all white. And then I see like black stuff dangling down. And then when I look up, it's a woman's face. And she's really creepy. Like one of those Japanese ghosts. I used to have nightmares about that a lot. Because I used to watch Asian horror movies a lot when I was younger. This one actually inspired me, like, I want to write a novel about this or something because it was so fucking, like, vivid. I was walking. I don't know where I was walking, but it was like a really foggy, like, afterlife sort of, like, vibe. A lot of pale peaches and orange and clouds and just mystical, basically. And I'm walking in this place and eventually I see a building. This building was very, 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 very tiny. I couldn't see the top because it was obscured by, you know, the same, you know, foggy, like, really pleasant cloud thingy, machines, whatever. And then I knew for some reason that this was where I was supposed to go. It was a hotel, I, I realized, with lots of fucking stories. I'm like, okay, so I entered a hotel. And the hotel is a pretty standard hotel. There's, like, the concierge and people and elevator, like, really fancy, you know, large hotel area, right? So I approached the front desk. They told me like, oh, you're this and this person, right? And it wasn't me, but I was playing as that person. I was like this old man. I don't remember. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. And they're like, your room will be in room 2012 or something like that. I don't remember exactly. Uh, A. Or let's say it was something like that. I'm like, okay. So they gave me my card key. And then one of the guys took my luggage. And I got to this floor with lots of doors. And then there was like A, B, C, D, and I was in floor 2012, okay? So I'm walking and I go to my room. And the room is super fucking normal. Like there's a window with, again, the weird cloud thingies in the background, a table, like a computer, and just a bathroom over there. I don't remember, but it was just a really normal room. And I realized, oh, I'm dead. All right, so this is probably a hotel for dead people. So I, I asked them like, oh, is this, is this... Am I dead? And they're like, yeah, but a lot of people get lost, so like, we have a hotel for them. And since you died in 2012, your room is 2012, and all the am amenities in your room is based off of what you would expect from someone in 2012. So like, if my room had been 1932, for example, then like, I wouldn't have a computer, for example. You know, if that makes sense. So I'm like, oh, okay. And I asked them, how long 
long do I have to stay in this room? And they said, as long as you're ready. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Okay, so I, I like stayed there. And I met a lot of cool people, like other old men. <laughs> I don't know how to word it. But we all had like hats and stuff. I don't remember the details, but we became friends. Like I was from 2012 and this guy was from 1911. And this guy was from 1800. I don't remember, but we were all friends and we would just talk and we would drink tea and shit like that, right? But there was something wrong with the hotel, like at the very top of the hotel, the rooftop. No one was allowed to go on the rooftop because on the rooftop, there was a lady who ruled over everything and she just stayed on top of the rooftop. In the dream, it made sense, okay? And the concierges would go to her and give her offerings. <laughs> I had to figure out like the secret behind this because there were some fucked up things like people started disappearing and they weren't moving on and I'm just like, what's going on? So I started exploring around the rooftop and I don't remember what the secret was unfortunately. It came to a point where it was, it was like some plot twist. I don't remember. I'm so frustrated but the lady wasn't who she said she was or some shit like that. And in the end, I, like, I was able to move on or something. <sighs> Oh my god, can I tell you another one? Can I just tell you one more? One more, okay? Okay, this one's really sad though. This one, this is probably the most intense dream I've ever had. This is the dream that you wake up with a massive fucking headache. Alright, so... I'm in a white room. There's like a little barred window here, right? And it's like an insane asylum almost. And I was living my life as this other girl. So I was a young girl. I was in this really white room and there was a slot here or something where food would come in or whatever and then i was here until i was six or seven years old and eventually someone came in and said all right we're taking you out and you're gonna live in this household with us from now on so i'm like okay so this is me i was a young girl i don't know who i was it wasn't me, it was someone else though. It was like looking at life through a pair of- another pair of eyes. And the house that I lived in was very normal. Like, you know, it had a front porch and a door, windows, and inside. It's just super fucking normal house. With me, there were like other kids there. Okay, these are kids. Just pretend, use your imagination. Like, just other kids. But I was the smallest and the scrawniest one. And the person who ruled over all of us, or she wasn't really a parent, she was a really shitty parent. She was this lady, like, I don't remember much, except she was very, like, scary. And I was very scared of her, and she was very, very, very stern. You could never please her. And then there was a dad too, but you never really saw much of him. He was always out and stuff. So I was the most hated one for some reason, and, um, the, the scary, uh, lady would, uh, beat me. <laughs> It was a really hard life for me because none of my other, quote, siblings, like, liked me. They all ganged up against me, so I was alone. And I was really tired of it, but there was nowhere else I could go. So I lived here until I was, like, 15 or 16. And then when I turned teenager, the lady would be like, Alright, you need to go work and, like, earn your keep here. Because, like, I ain't taking care of you or something. So I'm like, okay. So I would have to go to, like, really shady neighborhoods. And, like, sell probably drugs or something. I don't remember where exactly. But it was, like, illegal stuff. And it was really bad. And I almost got arrested multiple times. And I failed school. And it was just this whole life that was unraveling. So when I was 15 or 16, I decided, you know what? Fuck this. I need to move out of here. So I contemplated stealing the car in the driveway and then go far 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 away so i waited until they were all gone and then i got into the car and i don't know how i don't even the dreams don't have to be consistent right i just knew how to drive okay and then i started driving <laughs> i started driving and it got really dark and i remember this really specifically this is the one part that stands out to me the most. I was in a tunnel driving and I remember driving for a very long time until my gas ran out. So I'm like, oh fuck, all right, I don't know, I have no money for gas. So I ditched the car and I started walking past the tunnel. This is like the tunnel-y area. So I'm passing the tunnel and I'm in a really shady neighborhood and like you hear gunshots and everything. I'm like, what the, where the fuck am I? And then someone stops me. And it's this older guy I've never met before. And he says, like, if you come with me, I can take care of you. Like, I know you don't, you don't, you don't know me or, or something. I think I knew him, but I, I don't know the relationship between us. Because it's been so long since I retold this dream. But he said, like, come with me and I can save you. And I'm like, 
okay, I have nowhere else to go. And she's like, it's fine, get in the car again. I'm like, okay. So we both got in the car again. And he was the one driving. And I was the one in the back seat. And then we're driving. And then the dream ended. And then I woke up with a massive fucking headache. And I'm just like, what the fuck did I just dream? I'm like, I feel like I just dreamt an entire life. And I don't know how it ends. This is one that I've had consistently. I'm in a desert. It, the sky is really black. You have to remember, this is like super fucking dark outside. And I'm here riding like a really futuristic looking car, right? I'm driving and I'm lucid dreaming. And I know and when I lucid dream, I want to explore. I want to see what I can come up with, right? Like places I've never been to before. So I'm driving past this desert. Eventually the desert ends into this little passageway. So I go into the little passageway. And when I emerge, like there's still like the hills and everything. But past the hills, I see like blinking lights. It's a city basically, like in the desert. I don't know how to... Okay, just pretend this is like a city. You know like how like in LA or New York, you know, if you look at major cities from up above, it's like shining with light. That's what it was. And then there was a giant tower in the middle. I remember this. And then there was a dragon flying around. <laughs> this is a dragon, okay? It was a really... Oh, the dark dragon, sorry. But the sky is black, so I just didn't draw it dark. Anyway, and there were like stars and everything. It was really pretty and there were like mountains in the background. Like super picturesque. So I'm coming up here on my little car. In order to go to the city, I had to like travel go past this uh sandy hill and then you know drive past fucking piece of like i'm trying to tell me anyway i enter the city okay and there are like a bunch of buildings like really um i don't know how to word it but it's really vivid very colorful and light and there were vendors at every corner and it was like one of those places you would see in an mmorpg town so i'm walking in the city and i knew i had to go face the dragon in one of the alleyways there was a like a really obscure shop so i went to the shop and then in the shop the guy was like i have the stuff you wanted me to bring or something and i'm like okay but it, it wasn't drugs guys it was like this mystical stone or whatever to defeat the dragon i don't fucking know so i'm like i just knew i had to do it so i grabbed the stone and i left the shop and i keep walking and i wish i could draw what i saw exactly because it was really pretty like the grass was like sparkling and stuff and i don't i don't know how to draw and there was like a school i remember that i visited and it was just really pretty it's super super gorgeous place and i really liked it anyway Back to the dragon. <laughs> um, so, okay, there's the tower, right? In the middle. And then these are all the little tiny buildings. And this is me right here. Approaching the tower. The dragon was, like, flying around. I, this is not a good dragon. of a dragon. Okay, whatever. This is a dragon. There's, like, fire embers, like, trickling down. And it was also very, very pretty. Alright, I have the mystical item. Like, I don't know what to do. But I should go meet him or something, right? But I knew he was going to be angry at me. Oh, and then the dream ended. <laughs> Wait, there's a continuation. <laughs> the next time I lucid dreamed, I was back in this- You remember the sandy area I was telling you about? With the rose and the desert sky and everything? I was back there again! And I'm like, are you fucking serious? Alright, I will fucking conquer the dragon this time. So, I got in my car, and I started driving, and I got to the stupid city again. You know, the stupid, really pretty, you know, with the tower and the dragon and the stars and everything and I'm like standing on top of here again so I'm like, alright, this time I will go get the fucking dragon I go into the city again again, it's like just like how I remembered it it's like creepily so specific and the stupid dragon and the tower is still there so I'm like, alright I'm pretty sure I still have the mystical item like, I don't need to redo this so I go to the tower and every fucking time I try to fight the fucking dragon I wake up <laughs>